G'day from the Hotel Indy in downtown Indianapolis and today I go to my first Indy race. Well, it's actually media day. It's out at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. I've already picked up my media credentials. I've got my parking pass and I've got my little Indy 500 badge. Right now, it's about a 30 minute drive out to the track, which is in the suburbs, and then half a day photographing and videoing drivers at the track. Turns out it was only a 17 minute drive from the city. I'm at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Checked into the media center, got myself a desk, got myself a locker, and then I was off to the paddock to chat with some of the drivers about the differences between IndyCar and F1. Yeah, I guess to the untrained eye, these cars are very similar. If you kind of delve into it a little bit more, very different how the braking duct system works. Obviously the engine itself isn't a hybrid. The F1 cars are obviously faster on the road courses than us. I've been told that you're known for your hair. <laughs> yeah, does it look good? I mean, every time you get to an F1 event, everything looks perfectly polished and the track looks perfect and the, all the logos look perfect and all the pit walls are perfect and all the team wear is perfect. You'll notice in IndyCar it's a lot more, it's very old school. So you basically, you arrive and you drive and you push it to the limit and that's it. There's a lot less of what F1 I think does very well which is like image. Cars aren't even rolling around the track in Formula 1 and you're like, this is impressive. Um, IndyCar is a lot more raw and, and, ju and just very raw. I think that's the best way I can explain. The first thing is that everyone's got the same car, yeah. So <clears throat> everyone's got the same chance to try to win the race, which is good. Um, it's a much more basic car. It's like 20, 30 years maybe behind Formula One technology-wise. But it's much cheaper to run. There's only one part that we can develop at the dampers, and they do a lot. The racetrack are normally bumpy, it's rough. Yeah, it's a one-spec series, two manufacturers of engines, Chevy and Honda. But yeah, the big thing is, is you know, every car is the same. It's a Dallara built chassis that's uh, one spec. The Aero is one spec. In reality, you know, the, this weekend in, in the road course is 27 cars starting the, the race, and any one of those 27 can win and have a chance to win, which is, you know, as everyone knows in F1 is what, two teams, three at best sometimes, yeah. that can realistically win a race. We obviously go to road in three courses, which is pretty normal for, for a guy like me coming from Europe. But then the ovals is something I'd never done before, before I came here. You go round and round in circles for two hours or three hours, and it does sort of mess your head up. You pull so much G-force, like five or six G for two or three hours, so it definitely sort of gets your balance system out of, out of sync. So. First time I tried on oval and did a full race, I struggled to stand up for like the next half an hour. Just my, was dizzy, you know. So one of the biggest things for me is the fan experience. Uh, the fact that as a fan, as a young fan, you can come right up to the cars, you can see everything, you can almost touch it. The drivers are available. You can speak with them if they have time. Whereas F1. I mean, my, my first experience of being really loud into the paddock with my own pass was when I was 18, 19 years old. So to see all these little kids who are able to come and take photos with us as drivers is quite special and I know I would have appreciated it when I was younger. And then we have the racing side of things. It's, it's a heavy car, you know, like honestly we're in the gym every day because we have to, not because, you know, it's a fun thing to do. We have to train because it's it's a killer. Without the power steering, these cars are super heavy. Uh, and our races are the same length as the F1, but yeah, for the arms, you're fighting the car the whole time, whereas an F1 is very smooth and easy. We have a bit more, I think, wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing because we don't have DRS, we have this push-to-pass, which means you, know, you could use it at any point and make it work, whereas DRS, you can only use it in certain areas, and most of the time you wait till you're in that DRS zone to use it to overtake. Uh, so for us, we're, we're, if there's an opportunity, we can take it at any time and it's tough, it's wheel to wheel, it's not like uh, coming out of nowhere and passing easily. I'll come back to the drivers shortly, but I can tell you that photographing this event was a real eye-opener. On the photographic side, we had to attend a media briefing, which doesn't happen in Formula One. Out on the track too, I was amazed that whilst there were lots of gates to get into the areas that we need to get into to shoot, there was no one patrolling them. It would have been so easy for a rogue fan to get into our moat and then probably even onto the track. The drivers, well, they certainly moved around a lot more freely in the paddock, often without any sort of press officer, most of them on scooters and some in golf carts because they don't have a hospitality suite. So they would end up going back to their motorhomes, which is parked just on the other side of the paddock, and they would go from their motorhomes out to pit lane. Pit lane, 
completely different than F1. There are no garages for a start. There's simply this low wall and all the teams set up their equipment next to that low wall. And those with the right tickets are permitted to walk up and down there with no controls whatsoever. Of course, F1 has a standing start. IndyCar has a rolling start. They don't call qualifying qualifying. They call it qualifications. The race cars are towed out onto the pit lane and the drivers enter them from there. There are far fewer people involved in a pit stop and they refuel the cars in the pit lane. After quali, the winning driver gets a trophy and then they get to put a sticker on their car and that was quite a ceremony involved in that. And after the race, the podium ceremony saw a stand for photographers wheeled out and of course only those with um, sizable audiences get access to that podium. And then the car is jacked up onto the podium and the driver gets out of the car on top of the podium. I thought it was quite interesting that uh, when we had lightning on Sunday race day, all the people in the grandstand had to clear the grandstand. Now, I don't know what would happen if that was Indy 500 and you had 400,000 people in those stands. Where would you put them all on the ground? They wouldn't fit. Thank you to the people at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway who made me feel so welcome. Thank you to, to the drivers, Roman, Colton, Marcus, Callum, and Pato Award. And in fact, I've got another video coming up shortly that just focuses on Pato Award. He is quite an exciting character and you'll love the interview. But right now, let's hear more from Colton Hurtle. I guess the main difference that you'll see is this arrow screen weighs quite a bit more of what you would have in F1 because of the, uh, the, the glass-based plasti that we use for the screen. You see itself right below, it's, it's the normal halo just with the screen wrapped around it. The wheel itself is fairly basic compared to an F1 car. Different engine mapping settings, change the, the screen, um, some more drivability settings, um, pit lane speed, water, overtake, neutral, uh, very typical buttons. And then obviously on the back, much like F1, clutch and up and down shift. Another big difference about IndyCar is we have these which are anti-roll bar adjusters. So front and rear. Um, this is the front, that's the rear. You see obviously the seats are very different here. We do foam seats whereas uh, the seats are carbon fiber in F1. Again, this is something that, that we do for safety to be able to take a bigger hit. We have a suit that pumps cold water into us. In F1, you just have the halo and not the screen, so it's a lot cooler and you still get the effects of the wind, um, whereas we don't get that at all. What do you miss about Formula One? The travel. I miss going to Australia, Singapore, Japan. Honestly, the rest, Formula One is an amazing to drive. What don't you miss about F1? The frustration of not being able to win a race was you do everything perfectly. You feel like you've done your preparation, you've done your mental in a good place, you've, you've done drive, drove well and you just don't win the race. What do you love about Indy? I love the, the close access to the fan, I love the racing. It's not because you're in pole position, you can win the race, everything's happening, there's a lot of going on. I love the diversity between the different racetrack, street course, road course, ovals, within the ovals you've got a short on the, the super speedway. So I'm still very new at that, but I like the fact that you need to be good everywhere to be champion. Did Gunter call you when they were looking for a replacement? No, he did not. I guess he understood that I was too happy here and it would be, uh, yeah, it, it would be a no. So I'm glad for Kevin. I think he really wanted to go back to single seater, but I'm really happy here. There are a, a few drivers who have stayed in it for 20 years. You know, we've got Scott Dix and Will Power. Will Power's on his maybe 18th. Scott's on his 20th and it is possible when you earn a great living so uh, those guys are people that you know for me I would I would pursue in my career of, of doing that we've got the whole month of May where we're in motorhomes all together 33 drivers in one area it's easy going good fun like a couple of the guys invited me out here um, a couple of weeks ago you know to enjoy and see what it's just a good in good environment whereas F1 I, I don't see that happening as much, you know, like in your spare time. I see it at a race weekend, maybe a Sunday night, they go together, but not in your spare time very often. Permission to enter? Ah, uh, you, can, you can enter, it's okay. Oh, nice, huh? this is a bachelor's pad. <laughs> so you're still with Alex from F1 days? Yep. Is he any good? Oh, he's all right, yeah. <laughs> So he does the job. You've got this for the, the weekend, but there is no hospitality suite here. There's no driver's no. changing room, is there? No, exactly. It's mainly it's for the month of May, you know, for the 500 when we're here all the time on the track. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's just a place to get away from everything because we have the garage and the engineering office. And then we have like a small room to get changed. And that's about it. So we don't really have a hospitality like having F1 where you can sort of 
get away and get your privacy. So it is quite cool to just be able to get away and chill and have a cup of coffee and celebrate a win or something. That could be good for that. The aircon's quite loud, so we're just trying to um, dim the fan speed. It's not going very well. <laughs> Mid bath fan. Is that right, Alex? No, that's the fan in the bathroom. What did you do? I think I opened something, but I did that one was not. No, so that's not doesn't matter. But we opened something. Yeah, th this one, like just the. Uh, oh yeah, now yeah. it's like full. Yeah. They are they are anything. Well, if it starts raining, it's not so good. And recently, um, a Greek girl won your heart. She's half Danish, half half Greek. Yeah. What does she see in you? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, no, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, it's been good. And the aircons just come back on with quite a vengeance. You've got timing screens up here. There are driving today in the pro. Who do I know racing here? This is Lindsay Marie Brewer up here, and she's racing in what category is this? Pro 2000. I think it's like F3. And how many followers do you have on Instagram? 266. 266,000. And Lindsay, how does Lindsay go? She, she have millions, right? 1.7 million followers for a, a young woman that's racing in Pro 2000. It's a fair effort. <laughs> so that brings to the end my three-day stint here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and what a climax it was. If you haven't seen the race and you have an opportunity to, go and watch it. It's two hours of amazing happenings. Cars spinning, drivers going left, right and centre. Thoroughly enjoyed it. If you've enjoyed this video, here's your chance to click the subscribe button and the like button. Join up as a member. Thanks in advance for doing all of that. For all of my images, head to ProStarPix.com. You'll find photo books, wall art, merchandise at KimIllman.com. And for all of my images live from the track and all during the week, Instagram at KimIllman. Thanks for watching and stay passionate. And just outside the track, you can see this tall building here. What is it? It's got no windows. It looks like a very small apartment building. That's actually a cell tower for mobile phones. Apparently, the boss of a cellular phone company came here, couldn't make a call, one Indy 500 race, so he's gone and got that put in. That's why the internet was spectacular here this weekend.